Hey guys, so I was looking through my comments a little earlier and um, I saw there was still a little bit of confusion about the arrangement of the Divine Office. And I just wanted to go through the different things because it is a little bit confusing. I definitely understand that, like the different hours and what to do on certain feasts or this or that. So the Divine Office is broken up into kind of different classes. So I'm looking at the rubrics here. You have the Sunday Office. You have the festive office, which is first class feasts. And then from there you have the semi-festive office, which are second class feasts. And then the ordinary office, which are third class feasts. So everything's kind of broken up into these different classes. And where you go and where you flip around really does depend a lot on what class feast of the day it is. Um, so I will make various videos about the different classes. So today I just want to start with the first one as it occurs in the rubrics, which is going to be the Sunday office. You know, Sundays are kind of special set apart from the other days within the uh, breviary, the divine office. So let's go ahead and I'll flip the phone around and show you the rubric for the Sunday office. And then I'll show you where you can just kind of find that stuff in the in the monastic journal and how to follow along so let's go ahead and hop over to that okay so here we are we have the rubrics for the sunday office and the book i'm using for this right now is uh the breviary from baronius press and it has all the general rubrics right in the front like eighth of the book and uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have that in the monastic journal, but I will put a link online to where you can actually follow along with all this. And I highly recommend it. Um, I have put it in the comment section also on a few of my previous videos, but just in case you can't find that, I will put it in the description. So since we're looking at the Sunday office for right now, we're going to check that out. What is the Sunday office? The Sunday office belongs to Sundays on which no feast occurs, which takes precedence over the Sunday itself. So that pretty much means it's every Sunday, unless it's like the really big special Sundays, which are first class, which are like Easter and Pentecost Sundays, or the Sundays within the octave of Christmas, things like that. So most of your Sundays are going to be following this Sunday office rubric. And it's nice because, okay, let's say I want to pray lauds on Sunday, but I'm not sure what to do. Okay, let's hear at lauds. It's going to give us um, some rules for that. So you're going to use the antiphons unless proper ones are assigned from the Psalter. Okay. Psalms from the Psalter for Sunday. So you know where your Psalms are going to come from. From the first or second scheme. And I kind of explain the schemes a little bit, but I'll go through them very quickly um, as soon as we jump into the actual monastic diurnal. And then we have the little chapter, the hymn and the verse, as in the ordinary or the Psalter or the proper of the season. And the rest is in the proper of the season. So, if that doesn't make sense, let me just go on over to the monastic diurnal and we'll follow along according to what is in the rubrics. And you would just do this with any of the other hours. Let's say you're going to pay, well, you were going to uh, pray prime, you'd follow what it says there, or terse, or second vespers, or compline. You yeah, know, um, compline's going to be the same in the monastic diurnal for everything. I mean, and every single day it's going to be the same. So you, that's the easiest one to start with. But uh, let's go ahead and jump over to the monastic diurnal and follow the rubrics we're given for lauds and see how that works. So if you watched my previous videos, um, my first video especially, I'll show how I kind of set up my different ribbons. So my first ribbon is always going to be what time of year in the church year we're at. So tomorrow is actually going to be the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. I'm filming this video on July 8th, 2023. But tomorrow is going to be the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. So I know to place my ribbon here. Okay. And if we just look, this is, this is what I would call the ordinary. So in our ordinary, we have a verse and response. So that comes after the hymn. And then we have a Benedictus Antiphon which is going to be what they call proper. It's proper to that Sunday. And then a collect, which is proper to the Sunday. Okay, so other than that, this uh, this page here 
doesn't tell us where to find psalms. You know, um, it doesn't tell us where to find a hymn. So what we're going to do is flip over to our Sunday office. Now let me just go back to the beginning of it. I've been trying to film this video a few times and it hasn't worked out great. But uh, hopefully, hopefully I nail it this time. So anyway, we'll go to our Psalms because in the rubric it says the Psalter for Sunday. So here it is, the Psalter for Sunday. You have your introduction. You have your uh, Gloria Patri, your Psalm 66, which is in every hour of lauds in the monastic journal. Then from there you have your antiphon. Now let's see what it says about antiphons. So antiphons, unless proper ones are assigned, are from the Psalter. And as we saw back on our red ribbon here, there were no proper antiphons assigned. So that means we're going to use it from the Psalter, which is this section. So we're going to do the Alleluia. Now before I go any further, if you remember I mentioned that there were different schemes according to the different seasons. So this red rubric, you know, uh, do the red, say the black, that's a a common phrase. This rubric will inform us here if we're supposed to use these, which we are, by the way. Throughout the year, from the Sunday after Epiphany through the Sunday before Septuagesma, and from the second Sunday after Pentecost through the last Sunday after Pentecost, the three Psalms, and they're listed, are said under the single antiphon, Alleluia. So since it's the sixth Sunday of Pentecost, that'll fall in between the, uh, the second and the last. So we know, okay, cool. There's our antiphon. There's our first psalm. There's our second psalm. Okay. And then you'll get to, okay, another big block of red letters. So that's going to be where your second scheme starts. And it tells you what different seasons of the church here, these two psalms, so Psalm 92 and Psalm 99 are said, as opposed to the other ones. And just in case you're in those times, I'll read that really quick. So the preceding two psalms are replaced by the following two on lauds. On Sundays in Paschal Tide, on Sundays within the octave of Christmas, on the vigil and the octave day of Christmas, on the first Sunday after Epiphany, on the feast having twelve lessons, and third class feasts having proper antiphons for lauds in the office. On these days, each psalm of lauds has its proper antiphon as assigned in the proper or common of the office. So you're, if you're in any of those days, you'll pray these two psalms as opposed to the last two we went through. Then you notice the little break, and then the rest will follow for either one of the schemes. Then you have Psalm 62, and this is for Sunday, remember. You have your antiphon again, and an antiphon for the canticle. Since we're on Sundays throughout the year, we would use that antiphon before the canticle. If we were on Sundays in Paschal Tide and Ascension Tide, we would use this antiphon. Then we have our canticle. Okay, so we're just moving right along through the psalmody. And then we'll have again the antiphon after the canticle and the antiphon to jump back into our normal psalms, which is Psalm 148, 149, and 150. In the previous video, I kind of mentioned those three almost are treated as one psalm. There's no Gloria Patri in between them. Okay. And then there's your final antiphon. So we got through the Psalter, since nothing else was assigned, and it would, if there was to be something else assigned, it would be in like red lettering here, like take this from page 538. But since there wasn't anything we knew to use, just the regular Sunday Psalms. So now that we come to the chapter, all right, how do I know which reading to use? Should I use this or should I go looking somewhere else for it? Well, the first kind of hint um, would be, I guess, actually to go to the rubrics. So it tells us that the little chapter, the hymn and the verse are in the ordinary which the ordinary would be our red ribbon, and we didn't see a chapter there, we didn't see a hymn there, but we did see that verse. So we know, okay, at least I know the verse comes from there. So if it's not in there, then we know it's going to be from the Psalter. 
and we're still in the Psalter, this section. So we know that's going to come from here now. Great. And we know that response is going to come from there. And we also know that this hymn is going to come from there. Okay, so we're moving right along when it comes to the Sunday office because nothing else was in the ordinary on that red ribbon that I showed you. Okay, so after the hymn, then there's a typical verse and response. And you see one here throughout the year. Okay, but since I knew there was one on the red, I would go there. The Lord is king. He hath clothed himself in majesty. The Lord hath clothed and girded himself with power. Now, if you're following along with the rubrics, it's working out very nicely. And then from there, you have your antiphon for the benedictus that you would take. Okay. You have the benedictus itself. Gloria Patri. And then you would repeat that antiphon again back on that section. Then from there you have the closing. Okay, so the Kyrie, the Paternoster, and then if you're by yourself, remember it would be Domine exaudia rationem meum et clamor meus ad te veniat. And then Oremus, and it says the proper collect is said. So you know that you would have your collect right here because you checked beforehand and you would use that collect. Then after that, you just do those concluding prayers. The Domine exaudia rationem meum et clamor meus ad te veniat. Benedicamus Domino Deo gratias, fidelia manime per misericordiam Dei requies cantum pace. Amen. So, according to those rubrics, which I highly recommend, just, just study them, follow along, that's where the Sunday office would uh, take place, and that's, that's for lauds. Now, these different hours, let's say you were praying prime, you would just follow what that rubric is telling you. The antiphon, unless there's a proper one, and psalms, from the Psalter for Sunday, the little chapter and remainder as in the ordinary, and short lesson of the season. So you already know because of these ribbons, let's just let's just flip over to it to be thorough, that you'll be able to just follow, let's see, I think it's my white ribbon here, sorry about that. You'd be able to follow Sunday Prime, and you'd follow everything in there because there was nothing here that said prime, do this, on the red ribbon. And the same goes for those little hours as well. And then second vespers, we did have something. See, second vespers, we do have a verse and response, and a, I'm sorry, and an antiphon for the Magnificat, much like we did at Lauds. Um, lauds and Vespers are always going to kind of follow the same format. So if you do one thing during Lauds, like have a proper verse and canticle, you can almost bet that there's going to be the same thing with your Vespers. So I hope that clears up a little bit of the, uh, the Sunday office, what's to be done, where to flip. You'd be flipping mainly between your, your, uh, Ordinary, what time it is, the proper of time, and your actual psalms according to what hour you're praying, whether it be lauds, prime, terse, sex, non, or vespers. Compline in the Benedictine um, monastic diurnal is always the same. So Compline is definitely the easiest. You just leave your ribbon there. Um, so yeah, definitely read those rubrics and try to follow them to the best of your abilities. Also, if you're still getting lost, Go along with that Divinum Officium app, and that really helps. You just click the monastic option, make sure the date is set to what day it is, and then click on the office according to what, uh, what hour you're praying. So that's it for the Sunday office. Um, hopefully soon I can cover the festive office, and then these different offices, the ordinary and all those things. First class, second class, third class. But that was it for the Sunday office, and if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and I'll try my best to answer them. I am kind of busy, but I'll do my best, and I apologize if, it's, uh, if it takes me a while to get things done. But anyway, God bless you, and hopefully this helps you follow along a little bit better, at least for the Sunday office of Lauds.